Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Definition and with Mindhunter Season 2 reintroducing the world to some of its most fascinating serial killers, I thought I'd break down some of the real life stories behind the show's most infamous names. Throughout this video I'll be breaking down the true cases of four of Season 2's most high profile names and discussing how the show handled their on screen depictions. In this video I'll be primarily covering The Son of Sam, The Atlanta Child Murders, Charles Manson and BTK. Make sure you drop a comment below if you'd like me to cover the other serial killers of the season in a future video as everyone featured in this season definitely deserves their own documentary. If you haven't seen the finale of season 2 of Mindhunter and aren't aware of the resolution of the cases then I highly recommend that you turn off now as there will be some spoilers. With that out the way I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. Now let's get into my breakdown of the real life killers of Mindhunter season 2. The Son of Sam is one of the first killers that we come into contact with in Season 2 of Mindhunter and the show depicts him as a remorseless shooter that manipulated psychiatrists and other industry experts into believing that he had a degree of insanity. Holden calls him out on his fabrications and this leads to a more truthful conversation that allows for some fascinating insights. In real life, the son of Sam's real name was David Berkowitz and the serial killer operated in New York City during the years of 1976 and 1977. Berkowitz was a serial shooter that randomly ran up to parked cars and shot the passengers. He notoriously preyed on women with long dark hair and this is paid lip service to in the show during the interview when it's noted that women completely changed their hairstyles out of fear for the killer. Berkowitz taunted the press and gave himself the moniker Son of Sam, claiming that he killed to appease his father's insatiable craving for blood. Throughout his reign Berkowitz killed six people and wounded seven and was caught when his car was given a ticket at a scene where he later attempted to carry out a shooting. After his victim got away she reported the incident and police were able to track Berkowitz back to the parking fine. Upon being arrested Berkowitz was apparently smiling and bragging about how long it took for police to catch him. Later Berkowitz admitted that his reasonings were made up and denied ever being possessed. Holt McElhaney who plays special agent Bill Tench in the show has tried several times to to interview Berkowitz but said the serial killer does not wish to go over the crimes anymore and now refers to himself as the son of hope. Berkowitz is now 66 and is currently serving 6 life sentences for his crimes. Next up is the Atlanta Child Murders. The Atlanta Child Murders are the main thrust of season 2 and become the focus of Holden's ongoing investigations throughout. The crimes similar to the show were carried out by Wayne Williams, though he was only ever convicted for two of the deaths and there are several theories that there were other perpetrators that were involved. The murders themselves took place between 1977 to 1981 and they involved the deaths of 28 children and adults. Similar to how the show depicts his capture, Williams was caught by a bridge surveillance team who stopped his car after they heard a large splash. After Williams failed three polygraph tests he became the number one suspect though he taunted the police and even held a press conference at his own home. After fibres were found that linked Williams to some of the abductions he was arrested and convicted though he still maintains his innocence, alleging that the crimes were carried out by the KKK and that this was a cover up to avoid a race war. Whether we will ever find out if this is the truth or not is still unknown but Williams is currently 61 and serving a life sentence. And now onto Charles Manson. Charles Manson is arguably the most infamous killer that appears in season 2 and his on screen portrayal doesn't disappoint either. Manson was born November 12th 1934 and had a very troubled childhood and during his teens committed several offences that meant a lot of his life was spent in incarceration. During the late 60s after being discharged from prison he began to form a cult that later became known as the Manson family. Acting under instruction from Manson the family committed several crimes including a failed assassination attempt on then president Gerald Ford. They later went on to commit the Tate murders which involved the deaths of several people including the then wife of Roman Polanski, Sharon Tate who at the time was 8 months pregnant. The Manson family went into the home and killed her and 5 others. Upon exiting the house they wrote the word pig in blood on the wall. This was because Manson wanted to frame the Black Panthers to create a race war known as Helter Skelter however after the killers were caught this quickly dissembled. Manson spent the rest of his life in jail where due to his persona and interviews gained so 
somewhat celebrity status. Manson died on November 19th at the age of 83 and though he's gone, it's fair to say that his life is still a point of fascination. It really can't be overstated how much Damon Harriman nails Charles Manson and after his betrayal of the man in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the actor looks like he's carving out a reputation for playing the man going forward. Mindhunter perfectly captures his message and charisma and makes for a dramatic betrayal that shows just how controlling the man could be. And finally is BTK, which stands for Bind, Torture, Kill. BTK is hinted at throughout both Mindhunter Season 1 and 2, and it's clear that the show is building up to his eventual takedown, which will no doubt happen in future iterations of the show. BTK remained at large for over 30 years and operated between the years of 1974 and 1991. In 2004, he was finally caught after sending letters to the police, as well as a floppy disk which was traced back to his local church's computer. BTK was revealed to be Dennis Rader, a seemingly innocuous man that had an extremely dark side to him. Raider killed over 10 people in his life but seemingly stopped which is very rare for serial killers. Those close to him later stated that Raider could be seen spending hours upon hours looking over old books and shoeboxes in his treehouse and psychologists assumed that he had found a way to relive the fantasies without carrying out the acts themselves. Raider is currently serving 175 years in prison due to the 10 consecutive counts of murder that he was charged for. Due to the timescales of Mindhunter, I imagine that the show will eventually have a time jump and we will travel forward from the late 70s and early 80s to show his capture in the 2000s. Either way, BTK is a fascinating killer and Raider's sheer normality on the outside showcases just how unassuming serial killers can be. Mindhunter completely nails this and it's a credit to the show just how accurate each killer is. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the killers and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out my breakdown of Mindhunter Season 2 which will be linked at the end. I discuss all of the ins and outs of the seasons and give my thoughts on where the show could go down the line. If you want to come talk to me about movies, TV shows, games and comic books then you can follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT. It's the best way to get in touch with me and it's the perfect place to suggest new videos and content. I also just want to let you know that we're giving away a free copy of John Wick 3 on Blu-ray and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is to like this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on Mindhunter Season 2 in the comments section below. The winner will be chosen at random on September the 10th and the Blu-ray will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are never missing television, so if that's the kind of thing you like, you need to subscribe to Definition. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.